Greetings, Earthlings, Wisdom Keepers, Wisdom Seekers. Welcome back to Wisdom Drops, your source for dead at drops of wisdom and savvy cat astrology. My name is Tanya, and today we are discussing the Labor Day Moon that just happened October 16th, 2020. For you, Pisces, Ascendant, Sun, or Moon, this is your forecast for the next month. It takes that long for there to be another new moon. So even though you're seeing this a little bit after the new moon itself, there is an influence at hand. Okay, okay. Now, Pisces, a couple quick announcements before we get into the juicy details, and they are juicy. Number one, subscribe. If you're not, excuse me, already subscribed to this YouTube channel because I put out a video every single day of the week. And if you're a new subscriber, thank you so much for joining us. That's very exciting to see such a nice amount of growth in recent times here on the Wisdom Drops platform. If you're a longtime subscriber, thank you even more for being here since the very beginning. But with that said, we're growing and I put out a video every day. Be here for it. I'm here for you. Number two, like this video if it brings you any value whatsoever, because that will help other Pisces out there get the forecast, get the down low, get the um, what's ahead and how to best deal with it. So be here for that in that regard by hitting the like button, because it helps your fellow Pisceans out by promoting the content. Okay. Number three, last but not least, if you're trying to learn astrology, Pisces, for once and for all, and actually just have the ability to look at a chart and know what it is, know what it means, your chart, anybody's chart, your mom's chart, your dad's chart, whoever's, you can do that by taking my course. It's a three-month intensive program. I'm beyond excited to be offering it. The registration deadline is October 31st, Halloween. If you're not signed up by that point, Unfortunately, you're not with us. So be sure to schedule a Calendly call with me. The link for that is down below. If you're interested in partaking in that course experience, it's very interactive. A lot of times it's like you breaking out with other groovy people in the course. And I'm just like kind of popping in and out from the various rooms, like checking in on you and stuff. So that's going to be really fun. Be there for that. Um, if you're into it. And again, the deadline is right around the corner, like less than a week away at this point, I think by the time you see this video. So again, schedule that calendar call uh, real quick so that we can get you in if you're into that. Okay, now let's look at the chart, Pisces, and see what is what for you under this next month of influence. Okay, okay. Boom. Okay, as I said, on the 16th is when this went to full-fledged effect. The new moon, if you didn't see my video I did, Pisces, on just the new moon and that influence by and of itself, be sure to check it out because it tells you much more about the influence for the moon itself for everybody. And it just gives you more depth on that. This video is more about you, okay? Now, with that said, um, this is gonna be happening for you in your eighth house of Libra. And what a fantastic, incredible, interesting place to be asked to create a new, beautiful beginning for yourself. And why I use those words very intentionally. You're being asked to design a new, beautiful beginning for yourself in the eighth house. And that is because this new moon is conjunct the star of Spica, which is the fixed star of beauty and design, okay? And it's in your eighth house of the divine occult of what is hidden, of things that are related to other people's belongings. I mean, it's the oogity boogity house, that along with the 12th, you know what I'm saying? So there is a lot of spiritual judge on offer, Hmm, what else? A lot of intuitive judge on offer. I think that you as a Pisces are going to be looking at potential investments right now, either you making investments or gaining other people's uh, investments in you. The eighth house can, you know, relate to both of those. If you are taking on debt as a Pisces right now, make sure, or you're putting money in, even if it's not debt, if you're putting money into this, whatever it is, as a Pisces, make sure it's in order to design something truly from a dignified place, beautiful. If you're doing that, I think it'll be okay. And also you might hold off on making the serious moves until late November, mid to late, when uh, Mars is done being retrograde in your second house of finances, okay? Um, down here in Aries, because that'll give it more traction at that point in time, unless it's already been in the process, in the works for months before now. That's a different ball game, but you don't want to start something brand new, take on a brand new investment under this energy because it's brand new It's uh, and everything is retrograde right now. So that's um, just FYI, Pisces. But with that said, I think you are well positioned to be in that sort of investment 
uh, position, you know, if that makes sense, whether you're on the investment or invested in side of that equation. Now, also worth noting, the dispositor of the new moon itself, Venus, is giving really good judge to a lot of different planets and points here. She's opposite Neptune in your first house. So just be careful you're not getting too phantasmal over something or you're not longing for like an unrequited love because this is the first seventh house thing and that could be like a tragically unrequited thing right now, Pisces. Uh, truly, you know, with this sort of opposition that has that energy written all over it. Um, just don't get too lost in the fantasy right now with that Venus over there in your seventh house especially with how direct it is in that aspect between Neptune. It's only a two degree difference of orb, right? So just be aware of that, Pisces. Um, but with that said, it's a great time to put some tangible kind of like plans in action on how to develop that true beauty because Spica is here, that new moon, you know, Pisces, um, on, on offer for you in that eighth house. And it is related to other people's investments, other people's resources eighth house or even your own occult knowledge great time to take an astrology course you know to start that beginning for example anything occult anything hidden anything that is behind the scenes or not out in the forefront of everything that is society is eighth house it's not what's out public and just well-known common knowledge no it's what's hidden it's what's behind the scenes it's the subconscious energy to an extent uh it's the undercurrents of society the eighth house so be aware that there's new beginnings on offer for you there. And um, also, you know, this, just a quick note on this um, seventh house, Venus, really great for partnerships that are existing. Great if you are in an existing partnership, that's like a long-term thing to play a little uh, fantasy escape, to go on some really romantic excursions. You could be feeling a lot of intimacy for a partner right now, Pisces, definitely um, with this sort of like influence. Or even if you have like uh, pets and animals, if you're a Pisces, you could just be having a lot of nice affection towards your pets. Like, oh, you're so cute, you know, that sort of thing. Because Venus and Virgo rules pets. It rules animals, interestingly enough. Um, you know, that's another indicator of Venus and Virgo. So there's that. But also Pisces from your ninth house, this Mercury retrograde I like because it's making you think deeply about your belief systems. It's making you think deeply about what brings you joy, true joy at the end of the day. And it's having this reality check like, oh shit, moment with opposition to Uranus. So there's epiphanies and surprises on offer coming to you through communications with siblings, through communications uh, with even neighbors, third house, with uh, friends, third house, okay? A uh, local community environment, third house. There is some real deal like, oh, wow, that's an epiphany related to that and your, your belief systems, your belief system. Maybe you're finding out like your deeper belief systems are not in alignment with your siblings or your community members. Or maybe they are at a deeper level than you ever knew before. And it's coming in some really revelatory kind of auspicious new beginning with this uh, Mercury retrograde conjunct Juno indicator here. I mean, there's going to be a truth moment over the next month that really stands out and is really just like, wow, the truth just came out there, you know, and you could be you as a Pisces saying something really unexpected to somebody and just be aware of Pisces um, with a Mars retrograde in the second house. That's kind of volatile energy as it is in relationship to what you own, what you possess, what is your stability, what is your rock energy around you. And with um, this third house aspect, it could just be like, what I'm trying to warn you against is like being like really flippant in your words, which isn't necessarily like part of you as a Pisces, right? Because, uh, you know, your third house is Taurus, which makes you a pretty grounded communicator, pretty slow to say anything that would be, uh, you know, offensive. Pisces are very gentle, generally speaking, people. Um, more like Pisces is more of like a... Um, an altruist kind of energy or an empath kind of energy, generally speaking. Although y'all in a low vibration can be the best deceivers and kind of like players of the world in certain aspects, you know? But it's generally, it's the oldest sign. So it's the oldest souls have a lot of Pisces energy. It's also hella karmic though, you know? Cause it's like with altruism or with like martyrdom complexes and some manifestation of that word altruist there's also some karma, you know, but I digress on that point. Point being though, I need to, um, you know, we need to move along in the video. And what I will say is that uh, there's some truth coming forward, Pisces. And uh, Venus is supporting you at the end of the day from the seventh house. So I'm not too worried about the long-term ramifications. Just be aware there's a lot of tension. No, you know, look at the chart, right? 
Um, and you know, you could have some really new powerful beginnings in those 11th house arenas of your networks if you put in the hustle and the work and the grind for it right now. And with the Venus in the seventh house sending that very 11th house thing, uh, you know, support, I think you're on a good path if you choose to pursue that because there's a lot of divine support for it to manifest something, Pisces. So if you're going to work those networks, what it's basically telling you by this Pluto apex and this T-square, that big red triangle that was on the screen, you're going to have to put in the work, okay? You're going to have to put in the work for that network opportunity. But guess what? With all these planets there in their own sign, and by all them in their own sign, I'm really only referring to Saturn. But with these planets here as well, Pluto and Jupiter in that 11th house, I think that's going to be some powerful, long-standing, powerful Pluto and Saturn, okay? Long-standing Saturn uh, in Capricorn, its own sign, beginnings. So you're going to be feeling some tension around finances and what do you do with your finances right now? You're going to be feeling some tension with what do you do um, with other people's resources and investments right now? But ultimately your guiding light is what is the design that is the most beautiful, most pure, most true, pure, because the ruler is in Venus, is in Virgo of the new moon ruler, right? New beginning, what am I designing that is the most beautiful and true form of existence that I could imagine. And that's what I want you to think about if you're a Pisces, because the eighth house is there and it's a new beginning in that regard. And eighth house is the truth, okay? And uh, eighth house is also, as I say, a cult. So it's a great time to go and study something uh, that is of a cult nature, um, just saying Pisces. Okay, I've said a lot, I'm gonna wrap up the video. And before I do, I just wanna say, thank you if you are a new subscriber again. Thank you if you are, again, a long-term subscriber. Like this video if it brought you any value whatsoever, Pisces. I hope that it did and that it helps you guide your path over the next month with constructive, abundant, beautiful results with all that eighth house new beginning. Yay, congratulations. I'll just say that in advance. And with that said, oh, last thing, it could bring you psychological healing. Most definitely. I wish I would have said that far earlier in the recording, but if you're a Pisces listening to this, good job. You listened to your message. It was meant for you. Psychological healing beautiful new bright beginning, speak a new moon in the eighth house of Libra. It all reads psychological deep healing, new beginning. Pluto is at the apex of that T-square, uh, all about psychological stuff and healing it. Okay. Love it. Love it, Pisces. Really. I think it's going to be a good new moon for you. I, I do. But with that said, through next time, until next time, may the stars be with you. Peace.